Hi, welcome to this video on exploring how to use Express.js. In this video, we build a simple web app that allows you to set a price. So I can enter a price here, say 12 Rand, and then I can type in here how many of that's, and then I can click on set price. Once I click set price, I can enter how many of these items I want to buy. So in this case, if I say I want to buy 10 items, the total board up here of 120 Rand will be displayed. If I buy another 10, there will be 240 Rand. Then I can go and I can change the price to 15. And then if I click buy, 150 Rand will be add, added to the total board. You'll see currently if I click on buy, none of these routes are working. Set price. And but what we will do in this video, we will get these routes to work when we step through the whole process how to get this little web app to work. So this little app is based on a, this repository in, in GitHub. I will add the link to the starting repository into the notes for the video. So for us to get going, as you can see, kind of if you click on set price and if you click on buy, nothing happens. So what we want to do is we want to start with setting the price. So we want to actually set the price so we can start buying some products. So initially now what I want to do is we need to look at the HTML for this um, screen. So currently we just have a home screen and then down here we have we have this set price route which is currently not working. So let's start off by adding a set price route. So I'll go into my index.js and what I will do is I will create a set price route so we can go app.post and then what we can do here, we can add a set price route. We add a route, we add a request, we add a response, we do that. And then what we can do is um, we now need to look into the, so if I go back to my app now and I click on, I type something here, click set price, you'll see it will just hang here, nothing will happen. That is because now it's hitting my root, but this root is not doing anything. Um, so it's just sitting there doing nothing. So what I can do now is I can, um, we need to see what we want this root to do. So ultimately we want to read the price that's been set. So looking here, we have a price field here. So what I can do now is in my root, I need to get the price from the request.body. So what I can do here is I can say price equal request dot body dot price. And then what I want to do is I want the global variable that set me the current price. So I'm going to create a variable here, current price. And then I'm going to initially not initialize that. I can just say the current price is zero. And then what I want to do here now is I want to say current price is equal to price and then what I want to do is res dot render and then I say home so what we currently now want to do so let's see what happens if I go back see that route didn't exist so I'm going back I refresh that now so I type in the current price as I said 12 and then I set price so there's no error now but as you can see currently what's happening the price kind of disappears so what we actually want to do is we want to keep the price on the screen the way we do that is by sending the price back into the handlebars template. So what I can do here is I can say something here like I can current price. So I'm sending the current price into the template and what I can do now in my template is I can make the current value here come from handlebars and I can say current price. So let's see what happens now. If I go back in now, I run my app. You'll notice my app restarts because I'm running it with Nodemon. Okay, kind of just go back to the root. So if I set to 12.50, if I set the price, you'll see now the price stays on the screen. It stays on the screen because in my root here, I read the price from request.body. I put it in a variable and then I push the variable into the render method um, and then in home you'll see that we have a value here where we say current price so that way the price is staying on the screen so that's our first route working so now what we want to do is we want to start using current price we want to click on buy and then we want to buy some products 
So what we need to do now to get that right, as you see that by root doesn't exist, so we need to add another root. So for that I need to go in here. So that's again a post root we want to add. So I can just duplicate that and then I can go here and I say let's create a by root and then again I want to do res.render here and then what we want to do this time around we want to read the get the quantity from the form so you can see we create let's see up here so in our HTML you see there's another form here that's called by and then there's name here so the input field here is name so you can see we've got two forms there's a buy form and there's a set price form so we're now going to work on the buy form so we need to create the buy root so instead of saying price, what I want to say here is I want to read the quantity out of the body and then I don't want current price. What I do need now is I want to take the quantity and I want to multiply that to work out the current total. So I call that current total grand, grand total. So I'll say the initial grand total is zero. Okay, so now what I want to go when I buy something, I want to say that the grand grand total is I'm going to add that to the man. I want to add that to the current price, current price, and multiply that with quantity. Okay. So we want to do that and then what we want to do is we also want to display grand total onto the screen. So in this case I want to say grand total. So if I do that, let's see what happens. So I'm going to go back here, I'm going to refresh that. Okay, you see that pop up popping up, we'll fix that now, I'll show you how to get rid of that. So now I want to set the price, so I want to set a price of 12.50. Set the price, I have my price, I say, okay, I bought two products, I buy that, okay, it's no error or anything, but there's nothing on the screen. And what we have done here, we have sent the grand total to the template, but the thing that we haven't done is we haven't put a placeholder into the template for grand total. So if I go back in here, go back to my template, and I say grand total, go here and I say grand total, let's see what happens. So now we refresh again, you see we get the screen popping up, so I cancel, go back here, so let's set the price again, 12.50, set the price, let's buy two products, and now you will see now what happened here is it remembers a 25 from the previous product, because no one didn't restart, so what we can do now that we can set the price to 25, set the price and then what I can do, you can buy four products and then we click buy, okay, 150 so 150, let's try that again, so if I do another two, it should go to 200, let's buy, that's right but you'll see the funny thing happens here is that when I've set the value here, so let's set a new value here, new price of 10 Rand click set price, you see that number up there disappears um, when I'm doing this three buy here, it's actually coming back. So it's a bit like we're struggling to keep the data onto the screen. So there is a way that we can get around that. So, so currently we've got two routes. And each of those routes are setting, setting the data using the render function. This one is setting in current price. This one is setting is sending in only current price. This one is sending grand total. But there's even one thing worse. If you're actually going to go back to our home route, you'll see that there's nothing on the screen. All the, none of the totals are there. So what we actually need to do is our render route, our home route, should also actually send the data to the screen, to the home template, to keep the data there. So what we actually need to send is the current price and the grand, grand total. Okay. So what we also need to do with our set price route, it needs to do the same thing. We need to set in the grand total. So let's see now. If I restart, you see now already some values displaying, so it's much better. So if I update this value here to set price, it's 10 right now. If I buy two products, it's two. Even if I refresh now, 
you see I still get this this thing here okay the, uh, because it's now I want to repost the buy route so if I go back now and I go to this you see that it stays there so what we can do instead of doing this you can see there's a lot of repetition now you can see that we're rendering the same template over and over and you, we're also getting this weird message once I bought something if I go back here and I want to actually refresh it prompts me whether it wants to or we want to resubmit the form so it knows it's a post route and then it will do something and then it will actually repost the previous value which is something we don't want so either way we can get rid of that and also a lot of the repetition is to use res.redirect so what we can do currently is instead of rendering the template again we can just say let's re-render back to our home route we can do it in buy and we can actually do it when we are doing our set price route so say res.render so what we can do now doing this instead so after I've done something after we set the price or after we bought something we just redirect back to our home route our home route will just then re-render with the values that's been recalculated inside of the each route so the current price and the grand total you can see that each of these routes affects really affects one variable at a time so the set price do the price and the other variable is, is doing the the grand total so now what's going to happen so let's see so if we go back we run an app again and we say let's set the price we set the price to 12 rand 25 let's set the price okay so something is wrong now okay so it's because here we should have say res dot redirect and not res dot render so say so res dot redirect refresh that so let's go back refresh we say we set the price to 20 then we say we buy two products it's now 40 as you can see the route up here this it stays the default route but it will now it will very quickly do the post and then it will redirect into the the default route so now i can refresh you see that earlier message we got is gone now because we don't always now we're not staying in the post route there's no if you refresh there's no new val values that's getting added or anything it just stays inside of the the main route so yeah so now what you've seen is how we can actually go about to render to our screen only once using a redirect we set all these variables in one place and then afterwards we can just render them using the get route and we can redirect to the route now from our post routes one thing to bear in mind is that you can only redirect to a to a get route and you can't redirect to a post route and another thing you can't uh, send any data to a get route we look into ways of doing that in the, in the future there's a special way of doing it via using the HTTP session but for now just bear in mind that for you can only redirect to a get route and that you can't redirect to a post route so yeah so that's a basic introduction of how to use handlebar routes how to use res redirect and also how to put data into your templates and how to keep data on there so what you need to bear in mind what you need to do is whenever you render you need to send the data back to the template so that the data will stay there so hopefully this video give you a good initial understanding of how to use res redirect and how to keep data onto your screen.